Hi, this is your Sapna Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of the CISO Insight. Today we have with us once again Steve Winterfeld, Advisory CISO at Akamai. Steve, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here. I'm excited about our topic this week. Which is RSA and RSA conference. Uh, for our viewers, quickly tell us uh, what is RSA and uh, where does it fit in the cyber conferences? So RSA is an annual cybersecurity conference. It's one of the larger ones, I would say. Probably two of the largest are RSA and Black Hat. Um, RSA is kind of covers the whole spectrum, but a lot of management, a lot of big industry trends. Black Hat is more technical. Uh, and, and this is a time of year you see a lot of people announcing what's happening, new research reports, things like that. Um, there are vendor conferences. Gartner and ISC Squared uh, are, are kind of the high end. Then you have Google, Avanta, AWS, SAN, Splunk putting on their own conferences. There's some great local conferences. Uh, Rocky Mountain Information Security is the one here in Denver where I live. There's Cactus Con and Derby Con, and a lot of cities have B-sides. If you've never been to B-sides, I would get on the internet and see if there's one near you. They're always great, a little more technical, a little smaller, but a great place to build relationships. Excellent. Thank you. What was the big theme this year for the conference? The big themes that they talked about were first, you know, you could have called the conference RSAI. There was so much about artificial intelligence this year. And again, it's more the generative AI versus the traditional stuff we've done around large or around uh, machine learning. Um, there was also a lot of discussion around burnout. I know that, that we talked a lot about burnout during lockdown, but you know, there's a, a lot of people dealing with that stress and burnout again. And the last thing, which was around risk management, a lot of that ties to uh, some of the industry compliance things we've seen. You and I have talked about the SEC's materiality and, and some of the stuff coming out of Europe with resiliency uh, with DORA. Um, and, and so a lot of that was big. Uh, I love some of the keynotes. Akamai had a keynote that uh, had a lot of great information. Mandian also had a great keynote with some real statistics in it that you can take a look at. Um, I, I was surprised that they had Secretary of State LinkedIn because I, I typically don't think about, you know, the political implications, but that was a great insight on both technology and cybersecurity. And as always, uh, you know, there was 445 uh, different sessions. So tons of, you know, of, of your, if you're a specialist, you know, I'm a fraud nerd, so I could specialize and look at some of those. Um, and over 600 vendors, again, more vendors and sessions, but, but that is what it is. And finally, I love the early stage expos. Those are the curated startups. Um, you know, and you see some unique aspects in there. I saw one, which is how to use uh, AI for filling out all those questionnaires we get from our, our partners. So that, that I kind of like that, uh, thinking about how to get rid of some work. But you can look all those up on their website as well. And talk about Akamai's presence and if you folks made any announcements there. Every year there's a lot of announcements, a lot of research is released. Uh, we typically release some state of the internet report around that time. Uh, this year on the, on the product side, we had a couple announcements. You know, we constantly hear from our partners, they wanna reduce complexity. They want more of a platform approach. And so we took a lot of our zero trust that were uh, kind of in a capability group and we've integrated them into more of a platform. So we talked about, you know, how to integrate access and uh, MFA along with, uh, you know, our micro segmentation. Um, and then uh, just by sheer coincidence, we talked about acquiring No Name, which is a PI security company. So those were our two big announcements this year. But again, it's a great time of the year to go look at all the security research that was uh, released. Of course, your CISO and then different teams, you know, R7 comes to conference, you know, as you also said, this is one of the biggest conferences. But can you talk about some specific themes or topic 
that either from CISO's perspective or developer's perspective or DevSecOps perspective that people should be thinking about or looking at when they look at these conferences? The nice thing about these larger conferences is they try to organize their, their sessions into tracks. So you can say, I'm a developer, I want to see the developer track, or uh, I'm an incident response person track, or for me, a leadership track. And and so on the CSO side, there's been a lot of discussion lately on two folds. One, what should we be doing uh, to guard the company? And, and so the biggest splash I saw um, was around materiality again. Um, and, and that has two sides. Are we understanding what materiality is according to the SEC? And what do we as CSOs need to do to protect ourselves? You know, there's a last, you know, a, a criminal case in an SEC filing case. And there's always been a lot of talk around that. So uh, and I went to one talk where it was the audience was asking a blend of the questions. What should the company be doing and what should we be doing for ourselves? Uh, so those were some great perspectives. And the classic is, of course, this is a team sport. So we need to do better integration with the CFO, the legal team, public relations, you know, and make sure we're a member of a team. And on the personal side, there was a lot of discussion around just making sure that that we're a peer of the, like, for example, the CFO. Does the CFO have insurance protecting them in the case of legal actions? And if they do, then, you know, we would expect that we would be treated similar. Um, AI is a hot topic, um, and it, it's going to have more impact long term than something like blockchain. Uh, there was discussion around quantum, which which is a little bit, you know, how to protect yourself if quantum actually is broken, you know, for security. And, and um, I think but but AI was by far the biggest topic, and it's where we have a lot to learn. On the fraud side, I mentioned I, I love to, to think about fraud, the scams, how we partner with the fraud teams and, and, and those other teams to integrate our protection of our customers. A return fraud was an interesting topic for me this year. You know, it continues to grow and how, how they do it. Um, are they attacking the customers? Are they attacking the company? Um, and, and how all of that is working. So I found that fascinating. And of course, this is a 15 year that SANS gave their talk. I always find that, you know, a great insight. Uh, 10 years ago, their talks were very technical. It was about malware. This year, they talked a little bit more. One of the talks you've heard me, or one of the topics you've heard me talk about is technical debt. You know, are you, are you, do you have old language? Are you using open source? A lot around, you know, our legacy issues and, and the debt that brings. Um, sextortion, uh, you know, and the people capturing images, capturing conversations, threatening to out you. But there was something that surprised me. The first was the use of AI to create an image of you that isn't real and extort you through something you didn't even do, doesn't seem very crooked, or um, the age group. You know, they talked about going after 15-year-old boys because they're the most likely to pay, which is just makes my heart sick. But again, an area where we need to think about who we're protecting and when we're protecting them. Younger and younger, we need to protect our loved ones. Uh, to talk about election security and how important that is for our trust of our government. And finally, how AI is hacking, uh, helping hackers, uh, things like Shell GPT and other things like that. Earlier, you were talking about uh, the prisons, you know, the, uh, that, you know, politics and security. But uh, if you look at security and you talked about, you know, some of these cases where bad actors go after the most vulnerable ones, uh, especially from the point of this conference or security in general, how close or how separated the public sector, the government entities are from the security uh, you know, uh, industry or community? Uh, you feel that 
hey, I wish they were closer, or you feel, no, they're already close enough. It's just, you know, uh, we have not seen these kind of participants in the past. I just want to understand the importance of politics on security, because just yes, things are uh, getting very, very complicated, especially some of the cases that you mentioned. I think the first thing is, again, that public partner, public-private partnership in sharing information. Um, you know, I know many years ago when we were first talking about that, there were concerns about what the government would do. Would they use that to to fine you, to, to, to go after you if you shared something? But more and more, I think we're getting closer collaboration uh, and better partnership with law enforcement and the ISACs, the information sharing organization, uh, retail and hospitality, uh, health care, uh, finance uh, sector. I, I think there's a lot of positive things going on there. I encourage people to, you know, if their their company isn't involved with an ISAC, to consider that. Uh, the second part is, you know, if you talk about election security, uh, our election systems are so diverse. Um, you know, it's like if you're talking about protecting water systems, that's another topic that's been, you know, coming up lately. Um, you know, do we have APTs in, in some of our different infrastructures? Uh, there is not a centralized water board. There's not a centralized election system. Uh, and, and so a lot of this comes down to local governments uh, making sure they're doing the right things. Um, and, and, you know, what are their criteria where they're getting cybersecurity? It's a complex environment, but, but I continue to see improvements here. When we look at these conferences, in general, we look at two kinds of, you know, uh, folks who are attending. Those who are bringing ideas, insights, valuable, they deliver talk, the, you know, sessions. And then people who gain a lot of insights from these conferences. So it's like give and take, it's both. What were some of your takeaways and how based on the conversations you had, the sessions you see, your takeaway and how it's going to influence your own strategy for Akamai. So it's interesting, you know, we all learn differently. Uh, I learned so much at all these, you know, part of it is reconnecting with peers that you don't see all the time. I, I love that about, you know, your regional conferences, building your network up more. Um, but I, I, you do have a lot to continue to learn. The nice thing about RSA and some of the other large conferences a lot of the talks will go out on uh, YouTube. If you go to RSA's YouTube channel, you can look at the bunch of the keynotes. Um, if you if you want to buy access to RSA, I think you can still buy access, and a lot of the talks will record it. So this is a chance for you to, you know, again, 450 talks. How many can you see while you're there? So great chance for continued uh, education. You know, how do you learn? Are you, are you a hands-on person? Uh, do you learn better audio? Or I, I grew up reading, so I, I love to read books to learn. Um, and so as I think through this and what I want to continue to focus on, first of all, at the senior level, it is about what the big impacts are. Ransomware, business email compromise. I want to know what's going on there. I want to understand it. Some great insights recently. Um, and some of that ties into compliance requirements. Uh, NIST 4.0 just put out uh, a new requirement on governance. We talked about materiality. Um, there's there's so much going on there that there's some good insights. Uh, I, I think the two areas most of us are looking at to keep fresh on, transformation is in IT is so focused on APIs right now. Um, so do you understand API-specific attacks, the OWASP API top 10, um, those kind of things, and and where that's going to scale, what the challenges are, uh, shadow or zombie APIs. Um, I think that's something we need to focus on. And as I said at the very beginning, AI was such a big topic. And again, that's a two-sided sword. We've got people talking about how to use AI uh, as a cybersecurity tool, and people talking about what the threat is doing with AI. And so I think for me, I will continue to make sure, you know, I'm staying up. We're implementing some of the best practices we're hearing around APIs. And, and where do I want to put my investment in, in leveraging machine learning on our side? Where is the security functions where we're leveraging 
large language models? How do we secure that? I think those are our challenges most of us are trying to get fresh on or, or get knowledgeable on. Steve, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about RSA conference. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you. Thank you, you too as well.